Hello, this is Mr. Filipek, and welcome to Probability 101, or, you know, what are the odds? Now, you've probably heard of probability. A lot of people say, what are the chances of me winning? And a matter of fact, this little town known as Las Vegas was all built on this idea of probability. Um, they sell that, you know, you can win lots and lots of money, but odds are, that Las Vegas will always, always win. So what is probability? Well, probability is the chance that something will occur. It doesn't mean it's necessarily going to happen. A lot of people confuse that. You know, if they say you have a one in four chance of winning, uh, people say, well, you know, I, I got a 25% chance of winning. Yeah, but you also have a 75% chance of losing. I mean, think about the lottery here. You know, the lottery has all those giant jackpots, whether it be, you know, Powerball, Mega Ball, instant scratch-offs, whatever. You know, they all promise, you know, riches. But, you know, the lottery's not dumb. You know, they have it all worked out to, even if you bought every possible combination, you still lose because the jackpots are never quite big enough. And so my hope of becoming this future rich guy is probably few and far between. Now, here's some probability fun facts. And I think a lot of times we assume that people know that coins have two sides. There's a heads and a tail. Now, you're probably sitting there laughing, going, what in the world is this guy going over? Dice, when we talk about a die, it has six sides. Now, I understand that there are games out there where they have like 32-sided die. But if you ever asked to figure out what the probability of rolling, let's say, a three is, we're going to assume a six-sided die. And then the one that a lot of us probably aren't very familiar with is a deck of cards. Um, there are 52 cards in a deck. There are four different suits, hearts, clubs, diamonds, and spades. So if we take those four suits and divide it by four, we end up with you know, 13 cards uh, per suit. So we're going to go now over the three laws of probability. And the first law is just a probability of any single event happening. And an easy way to look at that is this simple little uh, fraction here, where we have the chance of the event occurring over the total number of possibilities. So for example here, let's say we have our good friend here who wants to flip a coin. And what he's interested in is, what is the possibility of getting heads? Well, using our little fraction up here, the total possibilities of a coin, there are two sides. Now how many heads are there on a coin? There is one. So we have one chance out of two, uh, otherwise known as 50%. Now, that means that on average, given multiple trials, like every good scientist should, it should equal roughly right around a 50-50 split. Now, you know those people who said, well, I can flip head three times in a row. But as we're going to learn, that that is less likely to happen than any individual flip of a coin. All right? Well, let's take a die, for example, here. What is the probability of rolling, let's say, a six? Well, the same rules apply. Uh, again, we make our little fraction here. There are six sides to a die, so that's the total possibilities here. And then the chance of the event occurring is there's only one six on the entire die. So we have a one out of six chance. So that means that for every six rolls of a die, at least one of them according to probability, should be a six, all right? And so uh, it doesn't mean it's going to happen. You might roll it seven times and still not get a six. But on average, again, doing it thousands upon thousands of times, um, one out of every six rolls, you should get a six. Well, building upon that is the second law of probability, and it is the product probability rule. And the key terms here that we want to focus on are in a row or at the same time. Whenever you're looking at a probability problem and it says in a row or at the same time, we're going to have to use this product rule. And what that means is, is that we're going to have to multiply the individual probabilities together. And so let's look at our example here. Let's say a family wants to predict what is the probability of getting two daughters in a row. And so uh, this is the way I set it up. So if we just say the first child and the second child here. What's the probability that the first child is a daughter? Well, there's two possibilities here, a boy and a girl. And uh, so we got a, a one-half chance 
of getting a girl with the first one. And then for the second child, and I'll change colors here. Um, again, there's two possibilities, boys and girls, and there's only one girl. And so using the prob probability uh, product rule here, we have to multiply these two. So if we take one half times one half, we get one fourth. And so the probability of getting two daughters in a row is actually less than getting a daughter uh, with the child. And so what we're doing here is the reason why the probability is less is because you know, to get a daughter, you get a 50-50 chance. But to ask for that to happen back-to-back -back times is going to be the least likely to happen. That's why here we only get a 25% chance of this occurring. Well, what happens if we want to flip tails twice in a row? And again, we're going to kind of set it up pretty much the same way here. Let's, um, we have two coins here. So we have the first coin and then the second coin. And again, what is the probability that the first coin lands tails? Well, again, we have two possibilities, heads or tails. Only one tail, so that's one half. The second coin will be one half. And because we want to do it at the same time, we have to, you guessed it, multiply those probabilities. So if I multiply these two again, we get a similar answer to the first problem, which is one fourth. And again, that just means that this is less likely to happen than just flipping tails all by itself. Well, to build upon that even further, we have this third law of probability, which means it's the addition rule. And whenever you have more than one way to achieve a particular outcome, we need to add the resulting probabilities for each event. And what happens then is that you will find that the probability of the event is actually improved. And the reason for that is because there's more than one way to get it. So let's take a look at this example. Let's say, for example, we wanted to know the probability of rolling a three and a six with two dice. Well, if we set up this problem here, let's say here we have the, the first die, and now here we have the second die. Well, what are all the different combinations of a three and a six with a pair of dice? Well, the first die could be three, and the second die could be six. But that's not the only way it could happen. <clears throat> What happens if the first die was six and the second die was three? Did we still achieve our outcome? Absolutely. And so what I like to do here is just draw a little bit of a line between here to kind of separate out these events and then figure out the individual, individual probabilities for each of these events and then add up the resulting probabilities to get our answer. Now, if you're confused, let's work through this together. What's the probability that the first die ends up as a three? Well, it's one over six. Probability that the second die is a six, again, one over six. There are six possibilities here. That should be a six there. Um, and so then, because we want this to happen at the same time, because we're throwing the dice at the same time, we're going to use the second law of probability and multiply them together, and we get one over 36. So that's the probability of this event happening. Well, let's take a look at the second possibility here. What's the probability that the first die ends up being a six? It's one over six. And what's the probability that the second die is a number three? That's also one over six. And again, because we want this to happen at the same time, we're gonna multiply those and we end up with 136. Well, if you notice here, we have these two resulting probabilities. And a lot of students would go ahead and just multiply them, but that's not the case. We want to add them, all right? so. Uh, if I kind of work my math over here, you know, 136 plus 136 is going to give us two 36s. But again, as every good math student knows, we're going to reduce that down to 1 over 18. And this is actually the correct answer. So if you notice that the probability of rolling a 3 and a 6 is actually greater then you know, limiting the die to be the first one to be three and the second one to be six. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little crash course in the laws of probability. Sometimes it's helpful if you, you know, take a look at the videos and stop and kind of work out these problems and you have to practice, practice, practice to be great. And as always, thanks for listening.